Good morning. I'm Greg Levinas with the Electricity Markets and Policy Group at Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory. Welcome, and thank you for joining our webinar on trends in the program administrator cost of saved electricity. To avoid background noise, all phones are going to be muted during the presentation, but your observations and questions are most welcome, so please use the chat window to send questions or comments. We'll be collecting those for a Q&A session at the end. Slides from the webinar will be posted later today, and a recording of the webinar will be posted later this week. Our speaker today is Ian Hoffman. Ian has been a researcher here in the Electricity Markets and Policy Group for seven years. He has a master's degree in energy and resources from the University of California at Berkeley, and he specializes in analysis and energy efficiency policies and programs, including data on energy efficiency programs nationwide. So I'll turn it over to you, Ian. Thank you, Greg, and thanks to all of you for attending. I'd like to first uh, thank two offices within the Department of Energy uh, without whom, whose support this uh, work would not be possible. That's the Transmission Permitting and Technical Analysis Division of the Office of Electricity Delivery and Energy Reliability, and also the Office of Energy Policy and Systems Analysis. We thank Caitlin Callahan and John Aiken of those offices in particular. I'd also like to recognize the cost of saved energy team, especially Greg Levenis and Chuck Goldman, who conceived of this project originally. So here's a quick overview of our talk today. We're going to talk about why understanding changes in the cost of saved electricity is important, then briefly summarize our analytical approach and turn quickly to results, starting with the national portfolio of efficiency programs and working down through the programs that address the residential and commercial industrial and agricultural sectors in aggregate, and then turn to results for some individual program types of interest. And then we'll sum up and take some questions. So why pay attention to trends in the cost of saved energy? Nationally, we see that the role of efficiency in the energy resource mix has been and is growing. It's important to understand how the cost of efficiency are evolving, notably for resource planners and for those with business interest along the energy efficiency supply chain. It's also particularly imp important for energy efficiency program administrators. They're facing rising targets for energy savings. And the question is, how can they meet those targets within the constraints of cost effectiveness? They can acquire more savings per customer. They can bring more participants into these programs. They can deploy new technologies or find new ways of using existing technologies. But where, among all these options, can they find economies of scale? And the changes in the cost of saved energy can help guide selection among these different strategies. Finally, the trends in the cost of saved energy can help answer some larger questions. Will energy efficiency remain attractive as an investment and a policy goal? What role might we expect energy efficiency to play in the future? So briefly, I'd like to talk about our, our project. We launched the Cost of Saved Energy project several years ago to get at these kinds of issues and, in general, to understand who was doing what, where in the country with efficiency. So we go into utility regulatory dockets all over the country and collect data on programs that are funded by charges to the customers of investor-owned utilities. The Lawrence Berkeley Laboratory Demand Side Management Program database now tracks more than 1,700 unique electric energy efficiency programs. These are offered to utility customers, accounting for about half of total U.S. electricity sales. And looking at these programs across multiple years, we have more than 9,000 program years of data. For this particular analysis, we looked at more than 5,400 program years of electric energy efficiency programs in 36 states. And these are depicted in the uh, map here at right. We collect uh, program savings and spending data, and where available, information on measure lifetimes, the numbers of participants, the numbers of installed units, and so on. We also collect the cost to the participants, what they're paying outside of what the program pays for more efficient goods and services. But for this analysis, we're just looking at program administrator spending. We take all of this data and we standardize and aggregate it in, uh, so that we can analyze it in a self-consistent way. 
So we characterize programs according to a topology of more than 60 distinct program types that we find across the country, and also according to a, a consistent set of terms, a kind of data dictionary for energy efficiency. It was originally developed by the C Action or, or State and Local Energy Efficiency Action Initiative. And more recently, uh, we've created and published reporting tools for both private and public efficiency program administrators to strengthen reporting and make it more relevant to policymakers. So we define the program administrator cost of saved energy as the cost to the program of acquiring energy savings spread out evenly or, or levelized over the economic lifetime of the savings and then discounted back to the year in which the costs are paid and the energy saving act actions begin. To calculate the levelized cost of savings, we need four things. We need a discount rate, and we here use 6% real for this analysis. And we also need to know how long the savings from a program or measure is expected to last, what we call the program average measure lifetime. Lastly, we need the program administrator costs and the energy savings. So again, the program administrator cost is just what the program spends to get the savings. So any incentives that are paid plus the cost to run the program, we also include things like evaluation, measurement, and verification. What is not included, again, is the participant cost contribution. That is what the customer is spending, not including incentives on the more efficient good or service that the program is promoting. So for this work, we wanted to be certain that the trends we were observing were statistically valid and robust. And we therefore ran the program administrator cost of saved electricity, which we're going to shorthand in the slides from here on as the PACSC. We ran the uh, cost of saved electricity values through a series of panel regressions on time with all other effects fixed. And we looked at those trends for the period of 2009 through 2013 for the entire program portfolios of nearly 80 program administrators. Then we looked at all the residential programs in aggregate for each administrator and all of the commercial, industrial, and agricultural pro um, programs, and then for select programs of interest. And at each level of that analysis, we were looking in a, an open-ended searching way for the functional form of the relationship between the cost of savings and time that offered the best fit to the data. We wanted to see, is there a discernible trend? If so, is it linear? Does it take a, a straight line of largely steady change over time? Or um, does, it, uh, does that rate of change actually vary over time? What if we allow those changes to curve with, say, a quadratic form? So getting into our results for the period 2009 through 2013, the cost of saved electricity averaged across all program administrators in our data set was 2.8 cents per kilowatt hour in 2015 dollars. Now in past analyses, we've looked mainly at savings weighted averages, but here we're using simple averages because we want to see the unweighted trend for all program administrators, large and small, regardless of how much they spend on their programs or the energy that they saved. I should note that during this time, the number of states with significant energy efficiency programs increased, and more states required program administrators to report program level detail. And so our increasing, our sample size is increasing. And so you'll see, you'll notice that it's more than doubling from 2009 to 2010. And in general, you'll see that while the cost of saved electricity was relatively flat, there is a slight curve here. We found that the best fit was for a quadratic form, such that the cost of saved electricity declined from 4.4 cents per kilowatt hour in 2009, goes down to 2.3 cents per kilowatt hour in 2011, and then it increases slightly to 2.8 cents per kilowatt hour in 2013. I do want to note uh, also that Again, these values include all spending in each of these portfolios, including spending on portfolio level overhead costs, planning, research, and other types of support, as well as spending on programs that may produce no savings, such as uh, energy audits or financing programs or educational programs. So now let's turn to the residential sector. And the cost of electricity savings there on, across all programs addressing uh, energy use in the home 
averaged 3.5 cents per kilowatt hour between 2009 and 2013. And they declined over time from, from 7.1 cents in, in 2009 to 3 cents per kilowatt hour in 2013. And the best fit here for all of these programs collectively was linear. Um, and as with the full portfolio values, this analysis includes all of the programs targeting the sector, not, those, not just those for which savings are claimed. So again, we're including audits and energy assessments, pilot programs, and other implementation support activities uh, that support programs in the sector. And let's look particularly within the sector at uh, specific program types, starting with residential lighting programs. And we find that the average cost of saved electricity for residential lighting in the 2009 to 2013 period was quite low at, at 1.5 cents per kilowatt hour. The best fit here, again, was curved, it was quadratic. It reflects a decline in early years and then a small cre increase in the cost of savings for lighting between 2011 and 2013, ending at 1.7 cents per kilowatt hour. So there are several technological and market changes uh, at work here that may explain at least some of this trend. In 2012, for example, the first phase of new federal lighting standards came into uh, force that increased the minimum efficiency of incandescent bulbs, which increases the baseline for calculating savings for compact, compact fluorescent light bulbs and light emitting diodes that are being promoted uh, by these efficiency programs. Next, uh, let's look at behavioral feedback or home energy report pro programs. These have grown rapidly in recent years from a handful of, of very small pilots to more than 25 behavior-based programs by 2013, and they've continued to grow since. These programs employ normative messaging. They're comparing customers' household energy use to those of comparable households, and they're providing tips on saving energy, such as turning off lights in unoccupied rooms or, or dialing down the air conditioning during the summer. Many of these behavior-based programs in our data set were pilots. Uh, but our sample um, of behavior-based programs analyzed here includes only those for which savings are claimed. So the cost of savings for behavior-based programs averaged 6.8 cents per kilowatt hour between 2010 and 2013. A, um, a curved or quadratic form provided the best fit to the data such that uh, the cost of savings values declined significantly from 2010 to 2011, then an increase to 7.7 .7 cents per kilowatt hour in 2013. So I, I think it's important to note that all of the program administrators uh, in our data set reported measure lifetimes for these programs that uh, assume the savings lasted a single year. And there's now a mounting bo body of evidence from evaluations based upon randomized controlled trials, that the behavioral changes promoted by these programs last somewhat longer. And some evaluators recommend using lifetimes of three or even four years. So if one were to take those recommendations and assume that the savings from these types of, of uh, behavioral feedback programs last three years, the average cost of savings for this period would be two cents per kilowatt hour, very much comparable to lighting as a low cost resource. Next, let's turn to residential retrofit programs. Uh, and we found that these whole home approaches to energy efficiency, and, and these include very comprehensive multi-measure home performance style programs and also uh, direct install programs that have a small defined set of measures. All of these collectively averaged 15 cents per kilowatt hour between 2009 and 2013. And we found that there was a uh, that the trend that fit the data best was linear, it was a straight line. And, and there were, um, we should note that there were a significant number of pilot programs during this period where program administrators often had few completed projects but were incurring high upfront costs in the first year or two to develop their program guidelines or develop working relationships with contractors and, and do some marketing. And we excluded these programs these, uh, that, that were spending less than a million dollars in order to focus on established programs and their performance. We 
uh, also, we did examine what the savings weighted average were uh, for, for these types of programs, and that tends to reflect more the influence of larger programs. We found that the cost of savings was significantly lower at 6.6 .6 cents per kilowatt hour for the five-year period. So now let's turn to the commercial, industrial, and agricultural sector. And the average cost of electricity savings here was 2.7 cents per kilowatt hour between 2009 and 13, starting at, uh, 2 uh, at 27 cents per kilowatt hour in 2009 and fluctuating somewhat to reach 2.8 cents per kilowatt hour in 2013. Um, fully uh, two-thirds of the savings in the CNI sector are concentrated in two types of programs. These are CNI custom programs and prescriptive rebate programs. The custom programs, and here you might think uh, significant retrofits, had an average cost of electricity savings of 2.9 cents per kilowatt hour between 2009 and 13. The prescriptive programs offer rebates on things like lighting and HVAC systems and air compressors and motors and pumps and so on. And these uh, prescriptive rebate programs in the commercial industrial sector had an average cost of savings of 2.1 cents per kilowatt hour between 2009 and 13, rising somewhat to 2.3 cents per kilowatt hour um, in, uh, in 2013. So again, the context for the analysis is the increasing reliance on energy efficiency as a resource. And what we're seeing at at least the higher levels of this analysis is there's not much change, even a slight decline at the portfolio and residential sector levels. So to what can we attribute these trends? Are we seeing economies of scale? Are our savings getting less costly as programs get larger or go deeper or broader in the economy for savings? Are we seeing perhaps evidence of learning that program administrators are simply getting better at acquiring savings? or developing more solid market foundations over time by forming partnerships with contractors and distributors and retailers. We still need to kind of cut this data in some other ways to get at these questions. It's uh, challenging to disentangle these things when you have program administrators at different stages of experience and market development, and they're evolving uh, at different rates over time. We do think, though, that these observations on cost trends are compelling in a resource planning context where we see the cost of renewables coming down, as you can see from these charts. Um, and uh, here on the left-hand side, you'll see that these are projections of the uh, levelized cost of energy supply for both onshore and offshore wind at the left. And then on the right-hand side, uh, current uh, trends for the utility-scale solar PV. And at least for this study period, the trends that we see indicate that energy efficiency is still falling beneath these and is likely to remain a significant part of the resource mix for some time. So to sum up, our analysis shows primarily nonlinear trends in the cost of saved electricity from 2009 to 13 up at the national level, on the sector level, and for some common program types. Uh, the national average uh, was relatively flat declining from 4.4 cents per kilowatt hour in 2009 to 2.3 cents per kilowatt hour in 2011, then rising slightly in the 2012-2013 period to 2.8 cents per kilowatt hour. In the residential sector, we see an average of 3.5 cents per kilowatt hour declining from an average of 7.1 cents per kilowatt hour in 2009 to 3 cents per kilowatt hour in 2013. In the, res in the uh, commercial, industrial, and agricultural sector, the uh, cost of savings was fairly flat, uh, reaching 2.8 cents per kilowatt hour in 2013. Uh, we have a fair amount of work ahead of us that includes assessing these trends out through 2015 and examining some of the potential influence influences on the cost of electricity savings. And with that, I think we'll uh, open it up to questions. Okay, great. So, the first question is: Could you point some out of? Uh, could you point out some of the studies indicating that behavioral programs should have a lifetime of three years as opposed to the current one-year standard? 
Sure. Uh, we should note at the outset here, though, um, that the persistence of savings from behavioral feedback programs, how long those savings last, is a matter of some debate. And it's fair to say that there's a lot of ongoing scholarship in this area, including here at Berkeley Laboratory. Um, a related question is kind of where are the savings coming from? Are we talking about energy savings behaviors, uh, such as turning off lights or the installation, or are we talking about the installation of energy saving measures? Early on, when these kinds of programs were new and their performance was uncertain, regulators and program administrators decided to use one year as a savings life, a lifetime to be on the conservative side. In the years since, though, we've seen a number of, of uh, evaluations for these programs that indicate the savings for a single year of home energy reports last longer than a year. A number of these studies are summarized uh, in a, uh, a CADMUS meta-analysis that was published in December of 2014. And what, uh, what CADMUS found is that the savings from these programs last more than a year after messaging stops, and then they decay at a rate of about 20% per year. So the behavioral changes, therefore, decline, but some of the savings is still there. Uh, all the way out to the fourth year after the last home energy report is delivered to the customer. If you add up all of those savings from year one out through year five, uh, you come out with a, with a uh, total savings that's three times the savings that are assumed for a single year. So hence their recommendation for a three-year program average measure lifetime. All right. Uh, the next question is, uh, in reporting savings, do these programs also perform bill analysis to quantify savings, or do they rely strictly on deemed savings? Well, I guess we would say that savings are estimated uh, for these programs using a variety of methods. These include utility billing analysis before and after retrofits for certain programs. But the majority of savings estimates for programs are based upon deemed or deemed calculated values that are compiled and updated periodically in, in uh, what we call technical re reference manuals. And program administrators often use these uh, specified engineering calculations to arrive at a sa savings estimate that takes into account the type of structure or end use, the hours of use, uh, the climate, and a number of other factors. OK. Um, next is, to what extent do you think the cost of saved electricity can serve as a proxy for traditional utility cost effectiveness tests that explicitly incorporate measure load, uh, measure load curves. Yeah, so uh, first using the term proxy is, is, uh, is appropriate here, because the, the cost of saved electricity is not really a cost effectiveness test or metric uh, like any of the traditional benefit cost tests that program administrators use to assess cost effectiveness. All of those tests use some kind of monetary valuation of both benefits and costs. And um, those benefits are defined as including you know, energy and capacity and sometimes other goods uh, that, are, that are saved uh, from the program. Uh, with the cost of saved energy, we're just looking at the cost per unit of energy saved. So it's a, it's a good leveling metric for comparison of efficiency programs within a a, a territory or across different utility territories or states or comparison with retail rates because the denominator is just energy and it's not a location specific valuation of all the system benefits. Okay, uh, next question is how do you handle shared portfolio costs? For example, educational efforts and outreach uh, when, you're, when you're calculating the, pr the program cost of safe electricity? Um, so, with the exception of uh, pilots, now at the program level, we, uh, we we excluded some pilots, but otherwise, uh, the full costs of, uh, of of all these programs are in included at each level of analysis. Um, and up at the portfolio level, all of the costs are accounted for for each program administrator. We're counting every dollar they spend, uh, even for activities that don't generate savings 
or for which savings aren't claimed, such as, again, audits and financing programs or planning or support activities or evaluations uh, and verification of savings. Great, thanks. Can you comment on the effect of codes and standards on program administrator costs going forward? Sure. Um, so on one hand, some of the new construction programs that we see uh, leverage the latest building codes in order to incentivize higher levels of efficiency. And in a number of states, uh, program administrators also offer programs that enhance the savings from building codes, say by extending, increasing the extent and the effectiveness of building inspections and the enforcement of the codes. And these code enhancement or strengthening programs provide some of the lowest cost savings in our database. Now, on the other hand, because codes and standards tend to raise the energy performance of new equipment or appliances or buildings, this does have the effect of reducing the remaining technical potential of efficiency savings that can be captured in these voluntary efficiency programs that are offered by, program, uh, by the administrators in our data set. All right. Um, did you find any surprises with respect to changes in costs of uh, energy savings over time by market sector? Yeah, in, in particular, I think I, I was surprised by the trend for lighting savings. Uh, many uh, observers out there have expected that the cost of lighting savings is going up and fairly steeply during this period. And yes, we're seeing some increase, a very modest increase in the later years, but it is very modest. And it augurs well for a resource that historically has supplied a very large share of low-cost energy sa electricity savings. Now, in, in part because the cost of uh, savings trend for lighting is not very steep, we see very little change, in fact, some decline in the cost of savings in the residential sector overall and at, up at the portfolio level of all programs in aggregate. Okay. And uh, finally, how are these trends beneficial or not uh, for different energy efficiency stakeholders like utilities, ratepayers, investors, contractors, workforce, et cetera? I guess I would say that you can come to different conclusions regarding uh, different program types and different stakeholders. Um, for example, if we're seeing an upward trend in the cost of savings for lighting in recent years, uh, you know, and, and you're a retailer of high efficiency bulbs, well, you might expect that as it becomes more costly to save energy with lighting, then program administrators may not spend as much on lighting rebates. But if you're looking at the efficiency resource across all programs collectively, the cost of savings is fairly flat or even slightly declining. And that's at least some indicator that efficiency is sustainable and will continue to have some longevity as part of the energy resource mix. Okay, well, thanks so much, uh, Ian, and thanks to everybody who has joined us, um, and we hope to hear from you again.